Hello, and welcome New Spartans. I'm Deborah Slade, Assistant Director for Outreach in the Financial Aid Office, and this is Financial Aid, How It Works at the G. Let's get started, shall we? You may be wondering, what does it all cost? I've been awarded. Now what? How do I pay my bill with financial aid? Well, we're going to answer these questions during this presentation. Let's begin with the cost. What does it all cost? You may hear some new terms as you go through this process that may be confusing. So I want to give some clarity on this one called the cost of attendance or COA. Now this is an estimate of all the expenses that you might incur during the time that you're in school for the academic year. Please note this is a budget, not your actual bill. Your actual expenses may be much lower or a bit higher than our estimates, but this is a tool that you can use to plan on how much you're going to need for the semester or for the academic year to cover your expenses. The examples that we have listed here are for on-campus in-state students and for on-campus out-of-state students. Once again, this is not your bill. This is not what you're actually going to pay to the university. But you may want to keep this in mind as you plan for how much money you're going to need. So let's take a look at what you will probably see on your bill. We call these direct or billed cost. These are the charges that you'll see on an actual bill. Tuition and fees will definitely appear on your bill for both in-state and out-of-state students. If you elect to live on campus, you'll have to pay for the dorm room and, and you'll also have to purchase a meal plan. So these two charges would be on your bill as well. You can see the semester totals, the in-state amount of $8,000 $550 for full-time on campus and $16,356 for full-time out-of-state on campus. And then that gives you your yearly total for each. Now this does not include some of these other fees that might be charged. For example, new students who are transferring in are assessed a fee for your SOAR experience and that's a one-time fee of $112. And you're also required to have student health insurance, meaning you need to be covered by health insurance while you're enrolled. The university coverage currently is $13.50 per semester. Now this is the current 1920 figure for insurance. If you have your, have your own insurance coverage, you're not required to take this out. You can waive out of this. If you plan to bring a car on campus, then you will need to purchase a parking permit. The amount for parking depends on the type of permit you select. Our parking services can assist you with determining your best option. Please review your bill for the actual cost. Remember, these are estimates. Now, let's look at costs that will not appear on your bill. These are called indirect or non-bill costs and they include books and supplies because at UNCG books are not included as part of your bill. They are considered out-of-pocket expenses. You can purchase books either from the UNCG bookstore or from other booksellers either online or in the store. That is your option. But you don't have book vouchers that get charged to your student account so therefore these are considered non-billed or indirect cost. Traveling home for students who live on campus, this can include the cost for trips back home during the semester and holiday breaks. For example, you may need to buy a plane ticket or train ticket if you're driving, costs for gas and maintenance for your car on those trips home. This is not only for traveling home, but for commuting students. You incur costs for coming back and forth to campus, to classes and activities. You may also have expenses in the form of gas and upkeep for your car. Remember, you're not getting a bill from the university for this, but it is something that you want to factor into your overall budget 
so that you know how much you're going to need. The last item, personal and miscellaneous expenses, covers things like soap, toothpaste, linens, or curtains for your dorm room if you're living on campus. If you're living off campus, you may be purchasing furnishings or decor for your apartment. The key here is that these are things that come under a category of other expenses that arise while you're in college. Things that you want to factor into your costs to make sure that you have enough funds to cover all of these expenses. Just a little more on indirect non-build costs. Remember I said if you live on campus, you get charged for housing or for your dorm in your meal plan. But if you live off campus, you will not see a charge for a dorm on your bill. So if you live at home or if you live in an apartment, you will not get charged for housing. But there is an estimate for room and board or housing and meals in the cost of attendance estimate. You can purchase a meal plan if you live off campus and then this would appear on your bill. But if you don't purchase a meal plan, you can use the expense estimate to budget the cost of your meals and the food that you might purchase for cooking at home if you live off campus. All right, you've got your award offer. Now what happens? Well, first, we want you to review the award. Look everything over. You want to make sure that the award information is correct, that it shows your accurate degree status, residency status, and grade level. You'll also notice that your aid information is listed by semester. That's how you are billed. You're billed each semester for classes, dorm and meal plan, and any other charges that might occur for that term period. Your award is also paid out per semester. So you want to make sure that you see amounts for both semesters, especially if you're going to be enrolled for the full year. The award will show up as fall semester and spring semester, and then you'll have a total for the academic year as well. Next, we want you to make sure to read the online financial aid terms and conditions. To get there, log into UNC Genie, click on financial aid, click on award, click on award by aid year, and then select the aid year from the drop down box. In this case, you're going to select 2020 2021. Then click on the award terms and conditions tab. This is very important information because it tells you what is expected of you, as well as the rights and privileges you enjoy as a financial aid recipient. You'll know what your financial aid funds can be used for and what's required to retain and maintain your eligibility for aid. It lets you know if there are any changes to your eligibility or to your enrollment status that your award may be changed as a result. So be sure you read that information carefully. Next, we want you to accept your award. The acceptance is fairly easy. Everything is online. You would log into your UNC Genie account, click on the financial aid tab, click the award information, and you'll be able to see all of your awards. Remember that your aid is listed by semester and you'll have the option to accept the award. Typically, grants and scholarships are automatically accepted for you. There may be one or two types of grants that would require that you actively accept it, but for the most part, they're all automatically accepted for you. Loans, however, do require that you actively tell us whether or not you want, you want to accept them, and you have some options here. You can accept the full amount that's offered, or you can accept a smaller amount, or you can decline the loan completely. Remember that if you accept a smaller amount, the amount that you're accepting is for the full academic year. 
So for example, if you are offered $4,000 in a student loan, but you only want $1,000 per semester, you will need to accept $2,000. That would make sure that you would get $1,000 each semester. If you just selected $1,000, you're only going to get $500 per semester. So keep that in mind as you go through. Now, if you put in the wrong amount, don't panic. All you need to do is contact our office. We'll be more than happy to work with you to make sure you can accept the amount that you need. So the question now is, how do I pay my bill with financial aid? Well, let's explore this. Usually by this time you have completed all of the requirements to be offered an award, but there may be some other requirements that need to be completed to get the aid credited or paid on your bill. If you're using student loans, there may be documents that you need to complete. For example, first-time loan, time loan borrowers will need to complete the loan entrance counseling and a master promissory note. We'll have all of these things listed that you need to do beyond just accepting the award. So please pay careful attention to your financial aid requirements within Genie so that you don't miss anything. Once you've completed all of the required paperwork and documents and online processes, your financial aid is then credited to your student bill. This tells the cashiers and student accounts office that you have financial aid funds available to help pay your bill. They are the people who assess charges, accept your payments, and also send out your bills. So we set up a process that lets them see how much money you have in financial aid to apply toward your charges for that semester. This reduces the balance due. So for example, if you have tuition, fees, and room and board, if, if you're on campus, that semester bill was around $8,500 for full-time students in state. If your bill for the semester is $8,500 and you have $9,000 in financial aid, then that's going to be covered. If your bill is $8,500 and you have $8,000 in financial aid, the $8,000 portion of your bill is deferred. But you will need to pay the balance due. So that last block says that if the amount of financial aid is enough to cover your bill, your bill could be deferred meaning that you won't have to pay anything at the bill due date. However, if your bill is not covered entirely by financial aid, you will have to pay the difference that's not covered by financial aid by the bill due date. The cashiers and student accounts office will communicate that to you when they send out your billing notification by email. You can also access that online through your genius in the student account center. So if you have a balance due that's not covered by financial aid, there are some other payment options available to you. Let's talk about the payment plan first. The tuition payment plan is, a, is an installment plan set up through the cashiers and student accounts office that allows you to break up the balance due and find five or four monthly payments. Let's go back to our example of the bill of $8,500. You have $9,000 in financial aid, that means that your bill is completely covered. But if your bill is $8,500 and you only have $8,000, then you will need to cover that difference of $500. So if your balance due is $500, you can break that up into five equal payments. Now there is a setup fee that's charged to get the plan started, but there is no interest because this is not a loan. You're using your own money but you're spreading it out so that you don't have to drain your bank account or your other resources. 
You're spreading it out over five months or four months depending on when you start. The plan becomes available in July. Please contact the Cashiers and Student Accounts Office for more information about that. You can find that on their website at csh.uncg.edu. Now, in the other block, the Parent PLUS loan is an option for parents of undergraduate dependent students. And those are students who are required to provide parent information on the FAFSA. This is a credit-based loan in the parent's name for the benefit of the student. It pays under the student's bill to help cover the balance. Parents may borrow up to the cost of attendance. Remember that number we talked about several slides before, minus any other financial aid that the student has accepted for the academic year. The loan is, as I mentioned before, credit-based, which, which means that there will be a credit review. Parents must pass the credit review in order for the loan to be approved. If the loan is approved, then repayment starts 60 days after the last disbursement. Remember I told you that the award is set up on a semester basis, so payment is made at the beginning of the semester. With the parent loan, half of the loan would be applied to the student's bill at the beginning of fall, the other half at the beginning of spring. 60 days after the spring disbursement is when repayment would start on that loan. Now you don't have to pay the full amount by that time, but you do see payments on it. There is another option to start repaying. You can wait until after your student graduates or is no longer enrolled at least half time to start making payments. So that's another option for you. Again, because this loan is credit-based, there may be the possibility that it's not, not approved if the credit history or credit report does not meet the requirements for approval. In that instance, the student is then considered for additional unsubsidized loans. Please go to our website, fia.uncg.edu, to search for loan information on the, different, on the different types of loans. You can also find that on studentaid.gov. The process for applying for the additional unsubsidized is really very straightforward. We will get the information on the denial and we will automatically offer the maximum amount that your student is eligible to borrow. They will have the option to accept it or reduce it or recline it if you feel it's not needed at that time. Remember, parents would have to apply for this. So that means that parents, you will need to log into studentaid.gov with your FSA ID. That's the ID that you use to sign the FAFSA. You will be able to complete the loan application there as well as the master promissory note. Once again, that's at studentaid.gov. The current interest rate is 7.08%. This will change July 1st. That's when the new interest rates are announced for the next academic year. Let's talk about financial aid and your refund. Using the scenario of having financial aid sufficient to cover your bill entirely, what happens to the excess money if there is something left over? Well, let's take our example of having $9,000 in financial aid funds and a student semester bill of $8,500. What happens to that extra $500 after the bill is paid? Well, the students receive that as a refund. And once all the processing has been completed and those funds have been applied to the student's bill, the cashiers and student accounts office will process it and send that out to the student. This happens automatically. You don't have to apply for it. You don't have to notify anyone. The refund process starts at the beginning of each semester and refunds are issued on a weekly basis by the cashiers and student accounts office throughout the semester. Checks are mailed to the student's local mailing address, or you can set up direct deposit. In the Student Account Center in UNC Genie, enter a bank account number under the refund profile in order to have those excess funds deposited directly into your personal bank account.
Are you wondering why your financial aid hasn't been dispersed or paid to your student bill? There could be a number of reasons, and we've listed some here. Sometimes students haven't accepted the full amount of the award needed to cover the bill. Make sure that you have accepted what you think you're going to need to cover the bill. Look at your charges and look at the aid that's offered. Make sure you're accepting not just for one semester's worth. Be sure you're accepting for the academic year because whatever you accept is divided in half and paid out each semester. So double check that. There, there could still be some financial aid requirements that need to be satisfied. Remember, we talked about having satisfied the requirements in order to get a financial aid award, but there may be other requirements necessary in order to have that aid paid to your account. So make sure you follow through on those. Double check your requirements in the financial aid section to see what may still be missing. One of the other things that may prevent your aid from dispersing is that there are holes on your account that may stem from you not being registered for the minimum number of hours to have your aid paid. This could happen if you haven't completed your registration. Perhaps you're still waiting on classes to be open or maybe for instructor approval to get into a class. So make sure that you are fully registered so that your aid can pay to your account. You want to check to make sure your registration is confirmed. Now that is not something that you actively do as far as going in and checking a box to say that you're confirmed. That is a process of making sure that your payment is in place, that you've set up adequate and satisfactory payment arrangements to cover your bill by the due date. Be sure you've accepted enough aid to cover your bill and that you're using some method of covering any remaining balance either through a loan or through a payment plan. Maybe you have another outside resource. For example, you may have private scholarships or veterans benefits or vacational rehabilitation benefits. Those are all things that can be combined to make sure that you have enough aid or adequate payment arrangements to cover the full amount of the bill that's due. There are several other things that you need to keep in mind. Make sure that you have submitted your final transcripts to the admissions office. They are necessary in order to complete your admissions file. Be sure to cancel your aid at your old school. That's really important for students who are getting a federal Pell Grant. Those funds cannot be paid at two different schools in the same semester. You want to make sure that you have adequately communicated with your prior school to let them know that you have transferred. Let them know that you're declining the aid that was offered there. You might also want to make sure that you've canceled any classes or canceled any pre-registration for classes at your former school. That frees those classes up for other students who may be waiting to register. Submit your immunization records to the Student Health Center. That is important. Students are required to have those submitted 30 days after registering for classes. Please do not send those records to the financial aid office or to the cashiers and student accounts office. They should go directly to the Student Health Services Center to be adequately added to your file. The Student Health Center can give you more details on how that process works and how to get those documents to them. The last item is complete the Title IV aid authorization on UNC Genie. The federal government has determined that only the required tuition, fees, meal plan, room or dorm charges can be paid through federal aid. If there are other charges, they don't automatically get paid by the federal aid. The Title IV aid authorization is your way of making sure that all of your charges get paid for with any and all of your federal aid. And this is where you have to give your authorization to allow those other charges to be paid by your federal funds. For example, you have purchased a parking permit and you have that added to your bill. You may have enough financial aid to cover that, but if you've not authorized federal aid to pay for that parking permit, then it won't be covered and you would have to pay that out of pocket. 
So you want to make sure you're following through on that. If you have any questions about the Title IV aid authorization form, direct those to the Cashiers and Student Accounts Office. You can access this form within UNC Genie. Log into your Genie account and click on the Student tab. There is a link right there in that section for the aid authorization form. We have covered a lot of ground. So now you should know what it costs to attend. You should also know how to review and accept the award. And you should have a good understanding of how to pay your bill with financial aid. We encourage you to connect with us. If any of this information was not clear, or if you have more questions, reach out to us. Our main phone number is 336-334-5702. Please be sure to enter your UNCG student ID and PIN at the prompt. This allows us to give you very specific information about your financial aid account. If you want your parent or trusted representative to access information or ask questions on your behalf, if you're not able to call us, then they would also need to enter that information. You may email us general questions, and we'll definitely try to respond to you as quickly as possible, usually within 24 to 48 hours. We do have certain periods of our processing cycle that are busier than others. Typically, the summer and beginning of the semesters are very busy. So we thank you for your patience if you email us and we are not able to respond within 24 hours. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but we will do our very best to get that information out to you as quickly as possible. Please follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram so you can find out what's happening with our office and what's going on with our processes. We also invite you to go to our website at fia.uncg.edu. There you can use many, our chatbot, to help answer any general questions you may have. We encourage you not to email sensitive documents to us, so we've set up a document uploader. It's located within your UNC Genie account. You would just log in, click on the financial aid tab, and there is a document uploader link there. There's also a slide at the end of this that will give you instructions on how to upload documents. The uploader accepts many different formats, so please make sure that you use that. It goes directly into your electronic file and you get a confirmation that it's been uploaded. We find that to be easier and we can process it and review it a lot quicker. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to call or email. We're so happy that you made the decision to join us and we welcome you into the Spartan family. Let's go G!